Sony. Wasaratuna ka waga kima sama the singa within mapamanai. You also want policy towards Sri Lanka. Can we briefly talk about this, especially on the national issue? Especially the Tamil issue, really. The Washington and, and the Foreign Service officers during that time of the 80s and 90s were of the opinion that the 11% minority Tamils in Sri Lanka were drastically discriminated. Mm -hmm. The Sri Lankan polity was controlled by a section of the Sri Lankan Sinhalese uh, chauvinist. That was the polity. And in fact, what really happened in see, after, just before the the defeat of the LTT militarily on the 4th of May in the State Department, Washington, one of the assistant secretaries gave a press conference to the international press about Sri Lanka. What he said was that the Washington was in fact planning to have a ceasefire. They are negotiating a ceasefire to stop the fight and save the civilians. In fact, that uh, official asked the question, first place, why did the LTT have a backing all these years? And he said, because of the Tamil grievances. And the second thing that he said was, once the lower cadre of the LTT uh, surrender the force, the arms, we are thinking what to do with the leadership of the LTT. And that leadership includes Mr. Prabhakaran. <laughs> so, uh, now here is a official in the State Department saying what to do with the with the leadership of a terrorist organization which has been designated as a foreign terrorist organization in the uh, under the federal law these two things had not been properly interpreted by anyone in the academic world or in the media world those two answers reflect the mindset of the washington and that is the one that led washington to make certain proposals to sri lanka to have judiciary inquiry here to move several resolutions in geneva i would like to quote your book where you say two Policy statements, one on February 6, 2007, during the period the government of Sri Lanka was engaged in the military offensive against the Tigers and another on January 1, 2009, at the time the military was approaching the final assault, clearly provided what positions the United States took on the overall situations in Sri Lanka. You're talking about... Let me clarify this first. A lot of people in Sri Lanka, mostly maybe academics and media, they are the opinion that the United States wants to divide this country. That is not correct. They wanted a united Sri Lanka. They wanted the, the central government power to be devolved and devolving power to the provinces means at least giving some say for the minority Tamils. Provincial council still had the central government's role played in that. So that is why most of the time the State Department and the American officials here including the present ambassador is uh, advocating federalism in Sri Lanka. Tamil political parties including the LTT never asked for a federalism. That's an home of the Tamils. That is the policy decision that the Washington has taken really to devolve power to give federalism and uh, to make more 11% Tamils in Sri Lanka more responsible for their own lives. In Sri Lanka, out of that 11%, 54% are domiciled in southern provinces. So, some of the things have been ignored, really. The country is actually divided into three. Now, in urban area, that 19% that got all the privileges since independence. And who are the people who are living in this area? Is the Tamil, Sinhalese and the Muslims. Now, the World Bank report of uh, September, September 2015 very clearly gives this on Sri Lanka. Very clearly gives the poverty and the economic opportunities and disparities among these two urban and the rural areas. So these are the things that has not been taken note of even by Washington, even by, by Sri Lankan authorities for the past 10-15 years.